Hello, I'm Corey, and welcome to episode 15 of Flips, Flaps, and Folds. Today's video, this is take, I don't know, four or five, um, and you probably saw it, yes, well, last video, when I was doing this particular pocket. Um, this is the, not the one we made on camera, but this is the one that I've included in here, simply because I told you that I was going to try it with a collaged page, because I like to use scraps, and so here it is as a collaged page. Uh, blah. here it is as a collaged page and the way I held it in with with um, some of these little paper flaps and this for those of you who will ask is it just a quick cuts die an old quick cuts tab die and I did it a couple layers thick and I held it in place like this so you can still open this up and open this up and write on the inside if that is your wish but um, you can also Keep it closed up if you want to. And I really like the way it turned out. It's a little bit thicker, so like everything else in this book, it's kind of too fat. But it was kind of fun to do as well. And I was thinking with these pockets, you know, you could make an additional pocket on here if you want. You could either put it this way, you know, on the front to add something else, like a little tag or something or a tab. Um, you could also, you know, put it that other way. And then, because it was right next to this page, and I finally glued this page, the one we're actually going to be making today in, um, I thought, well, that's kind of fun because this is the bottom pocket and there's a pocket on the bottom pocket. So I may end up gluing it in there. Now, this is something you have seen all before many, many times. It's just book page and it's layered pockets. And um, I do it a little bit differently, which is why I'm going to do it and share it with you all. And again, it's important to include in a pockets book because it is so handy and it does use book page or any paper digitals. This is a great one for digitals and it's got four pockets. Sweet Gail Augustinelli said, well, why not use that photo of your daughter or granddaughter Breck as your pocket tucker? You know, and OK, and I'll have to print more pictures of her just because she makes me smile. And two, because um she was with me for four days uh, unexpectedly. Well, we knew we were going to have her, but we had her longer than we thought. And I really miss her. So I'm too happy to use her as my tuck. So this pocket, it's a cascading pocket, a layered pocket. You can use book page. You can use digital page. I like it because, like many of us, I have way too much washi. And I don't use it nearly as often as I should. And this is a great way to use washi and still have super, super thin, um, thin profile pages. So this is essentially what we're going to be making. Now, this particular one, these are all two and a quarter inch apart because I measured it. And so this bottom pocket is two and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and a quarter. But you'll notice when I tuck Breck in that this is a much deeper pocket and this is a much deeper or shallower pocket. And then this one's super shallow. And I do that for several reasons. One, um, because I don't want all of my pieces to be, you know, my, my tags and such to be super thick. Because a lot of times I'll make tags with cardstock. And so if this goes all the way down and this goes all the way down and this goes all the way down, then I've got four layers of cardstock built up on top of the book pages. So again, it makes the book chunky. So what I do is I do it a little bit different and I will show you my process. This is just a quick sample that I made. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see it. Um... I fold the pockets. Sorry about the dogs. This is, like I said, take I don't even know how many in. So we're just going to ignore the barkers. Um, so goes down, not all the way to the bottom of the page. Now, when you make this, you certainly can have it go all the way down. And it's, so it's going to be four layers of book page or digital paper or whatever. But um, the way I do it, um, I generally don't. I make a pocket and then I lay it on top. I make a pocket and I lay it on top and I make a pocket and lay it on top. One, because it's super sturdy. Two, you can see it's still really, really thin. And three, then if I am doing cardstock tags, I'm not going to have four or five depths of cardstock. So this is essentially what you're going to be making. The first sample, everything was measured so that it was two and a quarter inches apart. Well, this you can see, it's kind of random. There's no need to measure. So if you're not a measurer, you don't got to measure. Ah, sorry. Okay, so the first thing I do when I do this is I get book page. Now, I'm going to point something out here. You can see these are all lined up because I grabbed all of the same book page. And um, I just put a piece of book page on top for another pocket, a tiny little pocket. I do that when I have images that I really like. So you can see it's all lined up. And that's not hard to get it lined up straight. But um, because I used all the same book paper. But you don't have to. If you don't like that lined up look or you don't want to worry about making it all lined up straight you can do it differently so the first thing I do when I do it is just like I said a little bit different than some other folks I grab a bunch of blank book pages and I 
washi in similar colors. So different thicknesses sometimes, um, though that's something you want to be aware of, is like this is much, bye-bye washi, um, this is much wider washi than this. So that might be something that you want to consider. But I'll just grab a whole bunch of blank book pages, pages and start laying washi along the top. Um, now these book pages, I trimmed off the top words because some of this washi was thinner than the, the than the words and then I figured we was just starting with a blank page and it's also deeper dictionary page or longer so I knew it would be the pages would be long enough to fold over to make pockets so that's what this is so first my first step was to just grab a bunch of washi and a bunch of blank pages and lay the washi so unrolled washi laid it out and then once I had several pages that um that were washi I would like with this one, I just kind of picked and choose. These are all four different washi, but I just layered it in the way I liked. I liked the way the colors worked together, or I liked the way that the, um, the patterns worked together. So step one, make a bunch of pages with washi, and you can use them for other projects. And then step two is lay it out the way you like it. So maybe you want to mix up the colors, or maybe you want to mix up the widths of the washi. Okay, so maybe I want, maybe I want it like this, all right? So I'm going to start with my back page and determine how deep I want this pocket. Well, rather than folding it back or laying it on top of each other, now you can certainly lay this like this, glue or sew all the way around, and you've got pockets. But again, that means your back pocket will go, your piece has to be longer, and this piece will have to be longer. And so you have to have longer tags or whatever you're going to put in it. So if you're wanting shallower tags, all I do is guesstimate. I'm not going to measure this for the sake of speed. I will fold it up just like that. And then I will come in on this scrap paper and grab my glue stick. And I don't have a favorite glue stick. I still stand by the statement that glue stick is for kindergartners. And I don't teach kindergarten. I adore them, but I don't teach them. But um, I actually have had the best personal luck with the Gorilla glue sticks. I like it. I don't get those big globs of glue on it. So I just put a little bit of glue. And then I'm going to, I decided the second one was going to be here. And then I'll lay this on top and I'll use this to make it straight because I don't have the ability to lay things out straight. So I'll go like that, and then I'll use the guidelines on here. Let's see, uh, this one's gonna be about this thick. Now, you can see here when I line this up, I've gotta be either careful to make it offset or careful to make it match, because I don't want it to be just a little bit off on each one. And then I'll push it down. And then this is where I do it a little bit differently than some other people do. So I've got my pocket is built in and this is the front of it. And so I know it's only going to go down to this deep. I will grab some packing tape like I do with many things and I'll make it narrower than the width of the book page. And I'll use this packing tape along the top so I don't have to worry about, you know, the, the top pocket catching when I put my tags in the packing tape is so thin and I'll put it down there and I also don't have to worry about re-gluing and having my glue show to make this sure that this is flat so now I've got my first two layers and you're going to see I'm going to trim this off so even though I'm using different sides sorry about the dogs there must be somebody outside um I can so you're going to see it's going to be a little offset well when I trim this at the end I can still line up these lines and it's not going to matter. And I'm going to just do this all the way through. So maybe I want this pocket because I've got something in mind that I want it to be a little deeper. So I will make this pocket a little more shallow. And again, I'll come in and I will gl put glue stick on. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to use the packing tape. And then make sure that I'm straight. I'll line it up on my work surface. I really hope I'm in frame. Sorry, I didn't stop to look. Um, I'll line it up on my work surface and then I will come in and I want to make sure these lines are straight because I don't like the way it looks on mine and it's not straight. But if you don't mind them being offset a little bit, then that's absolutely okay. And I'll keep doing this until I'm done. Now, this is also gives you um, your own determination on how deep or how long. Like if you're working with an eight and a half by 11, which is what? Nine by six is a more common album size. So I want to make sure that all of my 
layered pockets. I can do two, three, four, five, aren't longer than nine inches. So if that's the case, I can just come in and tear it. I don't have to worry about folding it up and then I can lay the next one down. Maybe I want this one to be a little more shallow because this one is an average size, this one's a little bit deep. And so maybe I want this last pocket to be more shallow and I'll come in and I'll do the same thing. Now, I won't glue this because I didn't roll up. Maybe I'll roll it up a little bit just because I like it. And so I'll roll it up, just put a little bit of glue on there and I will make it straight by using uh, let's see, I wanted it like, let's see, this, I don't want it to be the same. I wanted it to be a little more shallow than that one. So I'll come up here and I'll use the lines on my paper to make sure it's straight. And I'll line these lines up and I'll push it down. I'll come back. I'll glue this down because, oh, darn it, I didn't put enough glue stick on there. But now it's flat. And then when I'm ready to put this in my book, I can make this. I can fold this in back and make it as deep or as shallow as I want. Let's go about like that. I'm not measuring it. You can see there's no measurements. And then I will come in with my trimmer and just line it up. I can glue this or sew this, whichever I prefer. And I would probably sew it because it's me and then just give it a little bit of ink to make sure that it's and there you go. There's your very thin cascading pocket that'll work with just about any, any journal. And you can make it any size you want. And I've got different depths of my pockets. My pockets aren't all super deep or all super shallow. And I probably could use these off cuts for something too. All right, just a couple tips. Um, that's how you make the pocket, just a couple tips. Um, again, I talked to you about making sure your line lines up if you like it that way. One thing I often do when I'm working with um, dictionary page, I will grab a whole bunch at once and, and put washi on the edges of a uh, whole bunch at once. And then I have them to use as I want. This is a great project for different kinds of paper. Like this is the typing paper and this is the shorthand and this is the larger numbers and this is a different size page. But you can use different types of paper to layer to get a completely different look. And then maybe on these, like on my first one, I used all the same washi and I just used it at different, well, you can see here, I used it at different, um, different sections of the patterned washi to show. So it's in different places all the way around, but it's all the same washi and it's all the same dictionary. Well, this is different paper. And so maybe on these to unify them, I would use the same washi on all of them. And here it's all different washi with different dimensions. And um, another thing you can do is use, probably one of my favorite things is use different types. Like this dictionary is really long and it's got three columns. And this one is a whiter paper, it's a, younger kids dictionary and it's got two columns well this is a much smaller font and so I'll mix up the dictionary pages to give it a unified look but still having some difference and then the last thing I wanted to show you is something I do well, all the time um, I you saw it here on the sample I'll take if there's an image that I really like in my dictionary I will cut it out and back it with just a piece of scratch paper and then I'll save it to use it as a pocket or a tag. Like here, I would save that periodic table of elements and here I would save the passion flower. So I'm still using other sections of the paper to make ephemera to stick into my pockets. So there you go. The last thing I'm gonna do and your the pocket parts are done, but I had some viewers ask questions and so I wanted to address those questions. Okay, first one is, it's an idea book. Why decorate the pages? Well. Remember, I don't sell these books, this isn't for sale. And sometimes it just makes me happy to decorate the pages. And so I do. And if I don't wanna decorate the pages, I don't, but I like to see you know, see how different stencils will look on them. And you know, see what kind of different effects or different colors of um, tags and different types of tops on the tags. And so I just like to decorate it. So that's what I do sometimes, I will decorate it, but it's certainly not required. And I, you know, if you don't, for your idea book, if you don't want to, that probably makes more sense. Um, another question I have was, what do I have in this 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 pocket? Because when we made it, it was blank. These are just some blank journaling tags. All of the big pockets have those. And in this little tracing paper leftover pocket, I have a Tracy label. Now, I don't buy many digitals. And so um, Pink Monarch prints, um, Anna, and a Shut Tina at Shabby Dabby Doo Dah, and probably Andrea at Artie Mays and everybody else has these but my first ones that I bought were from Tracy Fox at Love Junk Journals so 
I always can call these Tracy labels. Any little label that goes on front is a Tracy label, regardless of who made it. And then I put in, I bought on Etsy um, some of these British tea cards that we don't really get in the United States. So I tucked one of those in. Here's one of those things that I said I do with dictionary page. I just back it on something and I tucked one of those in because it matches it. I thought it was pretty. This is a Tim ticket. Same concept. I'm sure other people make tickets, but Tim Holtz made them and that's what I call them. And then this is just a little paper clip um, embellishment with a piece of dried flour on it that I put on there. So that's all that's in that pocket. And I just did it because it made me happy. Um, this particular one, somebody asked about this. This is a cut section of the Tim Holtz flower ephemera. It had a big pink rose on here that didn't match, so I just cut it off. This is a, section, a scrap of tracing paper sewn on. I think I sewed the tracing paper and then glued it on. And then another Tracy label and a, a tiny smidgen of burlap. Um, and again, I've already shared the tip I use with sewing this on to make it as flat as possible. So that's just that one. Um, uh, last one I got uh, design teams. Am I on any design teams? Why or why not? Well, I did. A long time ago, for about 15 years, I worked in the scrapbook industry and I worked on lots of design teams and I loved it. Best people I've ever met. Um, still friends to this day. But I work full time and design teams, one, you have to make what they need, which is makes sense because you're wanting to use their product and you want to show how you can use their product. And um, I don't use many digitals because I have so much paper. So one, it's a matter of uh, time. And two, it's a matter of product. I mean, I have a lot of paper, scrapbook paper, so I use it. And I don't use a lot of di digitals. And three, when I was on the design teams, even with like Doodlebook, which I absolutely love. Cindy, Cynthia Sandoval is just one of the most amazing women. I loved it, but I got, I felt like I had to create with that. And I had to come up with unique and clever things all the time. And it put a lot of stress on me. And I do this now because I love it and it's fun. And I want to share ideas with people, whether they're mine or somebody else's in a different format. And so being on this design team, um, you know, it just challenges that or changes that a little bit. So there are your answers to your questions and there are my reasons. And oh, before I forget, um, the, I, because I've had my granddaughter, I haven't had a chance to finish the covers for, that I'm going to give to somebody. I said I would send one of these as a prize. Well, I feel guilty for making you guys wait. So I have enough to do three. So I'm going to do three of them. And hopefully this afternoon I'll be able to make show the video on how I made these, what the, the process is, and then they'll be ready to go and I will draw three winners. And rather than just from that particular video and comments, what I've done is I've written down the names of anybody who's commented and I will pull from that set probably this afternoon after I've had a chance to make the video showing how to do that. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I hope this gave you another idea, one more inclusion into your book. Oh, good Lord, I've got lots ready to go. And... Take care and happy creating.